August 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ephesians chapter 4 from the New Testament. I, therefore the prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live worthily of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you too were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he captured captives, he gave gifts to men. Now what is the meaning of he ascended? except that he also descended to the lower regions, namely the earth. He, the very one who descended, is also the one who ascended above all the heavens, in order to fill all things. It was he who gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, that is, to build up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, a mature person attaining to the measure of Christ's full stature. So we are no longer to be children, tossed back and forth by waves and carried about by every wind of teaching, by the trickery of people who craftily carry out their deceitful schemes, but practicing the truth in love. We will in all things grow up into Christ who is the head. From him the whole body grows fitted and held together through every supporting ligament. As each one does its part, the body grows in love. So I say this and insist in the Lord that you no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. Because they are callous, they have given themselves over to indecency for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn about Christ like this, if indeed you heard about him and were taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus. You were taught with reference to your former way of life to lay aside the old man who is being corrupted in accordance with deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new man who has been created in God's image, in righteousness and holiness that comes from truth. Therefore, having laid aside falsehood, each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on the cause of your anger. Do not give the devil an opportunity. The one who steals must steal no longer, rather he must labor doing good with his own hands so that he may have something to share with the one who has need. You must let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but only what is beneficial for the building up of the one in need, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You must put away every kind of bitterness, anger, wrath, quarreling, and evil, slanderous talk. Instead, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also forgave you. God, we need your help. We say we're Christians, and we go to church, and some of us read your word and pray to you. Yet what comes out of our mouth is anything but loving and kind and compassion. What comes out of our mouth isn't a reflection of you. Yet part of this passage is really clear that what is sealed inside of us, the Holy Spirit sealed inside of us, that's what should be reflected on the way out. That having this new heart we should be able to put away bitterness and anger and wrath and quarreling and evil slanderous talk. We should be able to be kind and compassionate and forgiving one another. Yet I hear a lot of bitterness spoken to other people. I've done it. And the only reason I can understand why 
we would talk that way is once again we're putting our needs our desires our selfish ambition selfish ambitions above somebody else you're really clear in the bible we're to put others before ourselves thinking of others is better than ourselves that what goes in our body isn't so much important as what comes out of our body <laughs> Even in Matthew chapter 12, you say, for the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. So if we have this bitterness and rage and anger and, and vile communication coming out of our mouth to perhaps it's our spouse, perhaps it's to our children, perhaps it's to our friends, perhaps it's to people we don't even know. We've got to really look at where that's coming from. Is it what is going inside of us? Are we spending too much time in the world? Are we spending too much time online? Too much time watching TV? Too much time reading the wrong books? Too much time around other people who, who don't have you in their heart? Now, I totally understand those are the people that we witness to. And I totally get that. But if we're spending the majority of time hanging out with them as friends, we're bound to pick up some of those patterns and habits and, and bad-natured way of dealing with things. God, we have to be so careful with this. Not only because you've said to, obviously, but because other people are watching us. Other people are watching our words on Facebook. Other people are watching what we pin to Pinterest. Other people are watching what shows up on our feed for Netflix. Other people are watching us really really close and so if you live inside of us if the holy spirit lives inside of us in our heart and we are supposed to reflect a, a new heart that you gave us what are we actually reflecting out are we are we reflecting kindness and compassion are we forgiving others not just the easy ones to forgive but everyone do we even hold any grudges against anyone now there is a couple of verses before this a notation about be angry and do not sin so there is a righteous anger and, and there is a right time right place for righteous anger but for the most part the angry part that we get has nothing to do with you it has to do with our fear it has to do with our selfishness god i saw something sad this weekend i was at a coffee shop actually a new coffee shop to me and there was a handicapped man outside. Um, he's homeless and there, I'm not sure what's wrong with him, but he talks a lot to himself um, and he always has his hand, right hand raised to the sky as though he's waving to somebody or maybe he's praising you. Um, I, I don't know, um, but every time I've talked to him, he's incredibly nice and kind and, um, he was outside of this coffee shop I was at, um, at the table outside. And after I got my drink and I sat down, uh, kind of right by the counter, I heard every single person who was working that day, probably like three or four employees, um, talking about him. And talking about him in a rude, obnoxious, horrible way. They were making fun of him. One, one of them actually said that she hated him being in front of the store. Um, and then they would engage customers as they came in with that same conversation of, oh, don't, don't worry about the guy out front. And then they would go on to make fun of him. And the customers then would engage in the same talk. And I was having a hard time even drinking my coffee. I didn't even finish my coffee. <laughs> I ended up leaving. Um, it just broke my heart. And thankfully, he couldn't hear this horrid conversation that was happening inside while he was outside. But God, I just pray for those people who were there that day. Whose hearts must be so incredibly dark and black that they feel the need to put down somebody else. That what they're speaking is exactly what fills their heart. And that's really scary. Because I know that I've had times where I've spoken out against somebody else. I had no right to do that. We're called to give grace to other people. We're called to be compassionate to other people. We're called to and commanded to love other people. 
one of my favorite psalms is Psalm 19. And at the end, it talks about letting the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So God, everything I think inside of me has the potential to come out of me. <laughs> so what I want to come into me is all good. I want your word inside of me. I want the love you have for others inside of me. I want your grace and compassion and forgiveness inside of me. So as I meditate, those are the things I'm meditating on. And so when I talk through actual words or my actions, those are the things that come out. We've heard the parable over and over and over again of the king who forgave a debt, a very big debt, uh, to a person. And the person was all grateful. And then the person went out on the street and demanded payment of a debt from a, from a friend of his. The friend couldn't pay, and so he had him thrown in jail until he could repay the debt. God, that's us. You give us so much grace and mercy and forgiveness and then we turn around after you've forgiven us for being so horrid and we turn around and, and we're horrid to another person. We speak ill of them. We speak ill in front of them. We don't glorify you in front of them. So God, help us today. Help us to fill our lives with things that are good and pure and honorable so that when we think about things those are the things that are going on in our head your word your compassion your kindness and if those are the things that we're meditating on those are the things that are going to come out of us you call us here in Ephesians to help build others up but only say what is beneficial for the building up of the one in need that it may give grace to those who hear. God, help us to watch our words. Help us to be mindful and intentional about what goes in to our lives and inside of us. And God, help us to glorify you today through our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Thank you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.